Hey FBC kids and welcome back to our farm. Now I wanted to talk about how life on the farm is pretty dependent on the sun. It basically tells you when to wake up and it tells you when to stop working and go get some rest. It's important for the animals, it's important for the crops, and it's important for us humans too. We definitely need the sun. I know, I love it. The warmth of the rays. <laughs> now as we are wrapping up our series, let's remember that when that sun does go away and the darkness come, it never lasts the sun will come out again. And with that in mind, we are gonna talk about how Jesus helped his very good friend Peter, even though Peter had made some mistakes, to rise and shine. So let's get started with some music. I'm gonna need you to use your imagination for a minute, okay? Now, <clears throat> imagine I walked you into the messiest toy room you had ever seen in your entire life. It looked like the toy aisle at the store had just <sighs> combusted and just went everywhere. I mean, I'm talking doll shoes and tractors and PJ masks and Paw Patrol trucks. And I'm talking matchbox cars and Legos. I'm talking Play-Doh and slime. It's just all been mixed together in huge piles everywhere. And your job was to clean it up. But I gave you a choice. You could either clean it up by yourself or you could choose five of your friends and ask them to help you. Which one would you do? I don't know about you, but I'm definitely going to go to my friends and be like, hey, please help me. Would you do the same thing? Yeah, I think most of us are probably gonna say yes to this answer because guess what? A lot of our hard jobs are much easier when we have a friend to help us out because we can each use our individual gifts that God gives us. Whether we're good at one thing or another, when we combine together as a team, it makes the job a lot easier. And I just feel like things are better when we work together. Do you feel that way? How much longer do you think it would have taken you if you had chosen to work by yourself versus working with five of your good friends? I think it would be very silly to work with five of my close friends. I think we would might get a little distracted being silly cleaning, but it would be so much faster than working alone by myself. 
so, so much faster if I had my friends with me. It's good to work together to help one another out. Now we're going to be reading from the book of John chapter 21 verses 1 through 17 and we are going to talk about how Jesus appears to Peter the disciple. Now let's talk about our farms again for just a minute. <clears throat> Every day on our farm, uh, well the farmer's going to have to take care of things, right? The animals and the crops and even the machinery that cares for those things as well. If the farmer starts to forget, well, it could lead to some big trouble for his animals, his plants, his machinery, his home, and basically everything on the farm. If they forget, I can't even imagine. It could lead to such terrible things. So taking care of their farm with love, diligence, and care and attention, well, it's the way that they show their love for it. Now, farmers aren't perfect because let's face it, none of us are, but they do their best as I hope most of us are also doing. So we are actually gonna talk about how Jesus responded to someone who loved him. And like I said, we're going to John chapter 21, verses one through 17. Now our story is gonna begin with Peter. Yeah, that Peter. cock a doodle doo Let's see how Peter reacts this time when people are asking him about Jesus. Now later, Jesus appeared to the disciples by the beside the Sea of Galilee, and this is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there. Simon, Peter, Thomas, who was nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. And Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out on the boat, but they caught nothing all night long. No fish. Oh, the worst kind of fishing trip. And that dawn, well, Jesus was standing there on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who it was. And he called out, fellows, have you caught any fish? And the men on the boat replied, no. And then he said, throw your net out onto the right side of the boat. You'll get some. So they did. And they couldn't even haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. And the disciple who, the disciple Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic for he had taken it off for work and he jumped into the water and he headed to the shore. Now the others had stayed with the boat and they pulled the loaded net to the shore. And when they got there, they found that breakfast was waiting for them with some fish cooking over a charcoal fire and a little bit of bread and Bring some of the fish you just caught, Jesus said. And Simon Peter went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. And there were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask, who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. And this was the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. Now after breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, Son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied. You know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus said. Then Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said. You know that I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. And a third time he was asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus had asked the question the third time. And he said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said, then feed my sheep. Hmm. What could this possibly mean for us? Well, let's talk about that. The story, again, focuses on Peter. Do you remember Peter? I did a little cock a doodle do earlier because earlier in our resurrection story, Jesus told Peter that he would deny knowing Jesus. And he would do it three times before the rooster crow. I want you to remember the three times, okay? He kind of panicked, and yes, he did. Three different uh, times he was approached after Jesus was arrested, and people asked him, hey, aren't you that guy that was with Jesus? He's like, nope, not me. Nope, never heard of him. Nope, I don't even know what you're talking about. Why are you accusing me? And as soon as he finished saying no the third time, the rooster crowed, and Peter was devastated. He remembered exactly what Jesus had said, and he felt awful and he wanted to make up for it. He wanted to apologize, he wanted to change. So one day, Peter and some of the disciples are out fishing and they fish for hours and hours, but all night long they caught, they caught nothing. 
And then this guy on the shore is like, hey, you caught anything? And the disciples are like, no. So the guy on the shore says, well, just cast your net over to the right side of the boat. Well, guess what? They did. And the net was so filled with fish, they couldn't even haul it back into the boat. Does any of this sound familiar? Well, actually, many years before this moment, well, okay, about three-ish, um, Jesus approached these same men, similar men, his disciples, and he said, do you want to become fishers of men? Then put down your nets and follow me. Here again, Jesus is talking to them as they're fishing. And I think they knew it was just Jesus. They knew that this kind of conversation, they knew that following his instructions to after fishing all night, not having caught anything, to just cast their nets exactly where they were, just on a different side of the boat maybe than they were doing. And they hauled it all up. They just, they believed that it was Jesus. And Peter was so excited that it was, that he jumped into the water and he got to the shore. And the other disciples followed along, dragging the net with them. When they did, Jesus, there was this fire and Jesus was there and there was some fish cooking. And Jesus was like, you know, how many fish did you get? Come haul them up here. Let's see. And they had so many that they thought the net must surely have broken and busted with all these fish. But again, it didn't. And as they're sitting down, Jesus kind of looks at Peter and he says, hey, Peter, do you love me? And Peter's like, yes, of course. Feed my sheep. Hey, Peter, what, Jesus? Do you love me? You know that I love you. Then take care of my sheep. Hey, Peter, do you love me? You know everything. You know that I love you. Then care for my sheep. Feed my sheep. Do you remember how many times Peter denied Jesus? Do you remember how many times Jesus asked him if he loved him? It was the same number. I think that's pretty important. I think that Jesus was given Peter those three opportunities to give the right answer to that question. Yes, he knew Jesus. Yes, he loved Jesus. And guess what? He was going to show that love every day by caring for Jesus' sheep. In telling Peter to care for his sheep, Jesus was telling Peter to care for others and to share the things that he knew about Jesus because he had been his disciple for these years. But saying I love you is totally different than acting as if you love someone. Jesus was showing the difference. Jesus showed us his love by dying on the cross for us and rising from the grave. He paid the debt for our sin. And now Jesus was instructing Peter to show how much he truly did love Jesus by taking care of others. And guess what? We get to learn that same lesson now. We get to show how much we love Jesus the way that we share with our friends, the, sh the ways that we care for them, the ways that we interact, and not only with our friends, but guess what, strangers too. Yeah, they will know we are Christians by our love. And we're gonna talk about how I can share God's love every day. In fact, that is our big idea, which means we need to say it together. I'll say it one more time. I can share God's love every day. Your turn. I can share God's love every day. So in order to be people, Christians, who can share God's love every day, we need to know ways to do that. So let's think of a problem, okay? Let's think about a friend who's upset about something that happened at school. How can you help? How can you listen? How could you lead them to either feeling better or to an answer to a problem? like helping them out when you know there's a difficult situation. How could you give? And then you'd be like, Michelia, what do you mean I have to give somebody? Do I have to like give them my candy? <laughs> Giving can be a physical thing. Like maybe you know a lollipop would make a friend feel better if they fell down and hurt their knee or something along those lines. But you can also give your time and your attention and your friendship as well. So it could be something emotional or physical. High fives are pretty magical too. Now, in order to help like I've been talking about and how we can share God's love every single day, we need to know how to react in certain situations. So let's think about a first aid kit, okay? Well, we know each item inside the first aid kit is used for a problem. 
If I fell down and scraped up my knee, I would definitely need some gauze to stop the bleeding or a Band-Aid as well. If I got a splinter, well, those tweezers are gonna come in handy in getting it out. Usually first aid kits even have a little bit of water in them these days, a little bit of clean water. So if I got dirt in my eye, I could use the water to clean it out. And there are so many other tiny little things in there that help in each individual or different situation. Cause let's face it, kids get hurt in a lot of different ways and grownups do too. So in order to help in a situation, we need to know how to respond and how to react. How can we help? How can we listen? How could we lead? And how can we give of ourselves in that? We're gonna also ask God at the end during our prayer time to help us to see those who are in need. Not everybody is able to say that they need help or to ask for it. So we are going to ask God how we can help others and for courage to ask for help ourselves. But I wanna read you some verses from John chapter 10, verses one through 10. And we were talking more about shepherds. We talked a little bit last week, but I wanna talk more this week. Are you ready? This passage is called The Good Shepherd and His Sheep, and I tell you the truth, it says, anyone who sneaks over the wall of a sheepfold rather than going through the gate must surely be a thief and a robber. But the one who enters through the gate, he's the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. The sheep recognize his voice, and they come towards him, and he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out. After he has gathered his own flock, he walks ahead of them and they follow him because they know his voice. They won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. Those who heard Jesus use this illustration didn't understand what he meant. So he explained it to them. Good thing. I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me were thieves and robbers, but the true sheep did not listen to them. Yes, I am the gate. Those who come in through me will be saved. They will come and go freely and will find good pastures. The thief's purpose is to steal and to kill and destroy. My purpose is to give them a rich and satisfying life. Some differences between those who came before Jesus claiming and what Jesus actually offers us. But do you know what a sheep sheepfold sheep wall is okay so a sheepfold would have been like the pen where sheep were kept and obviously in order to get into a pen you're not going to climb over this giant wall because it would be the wrong thing to do and usually if someone's doing the wrong thing they're up to no good that means that you're going to want to go through the gate right now the sheep were kept somewhere safe and the gate to the sheep pen was easily accessible the shepherd goes in through the sheep pen he gathers up his sheep and he knows them by name he calls them charlotte Indigo, Alonzo, Alberto. I'm just gonna stick with some A names for now. Albert, he calls them by name because he knows them and they know him, they know the sound of his voice so they happily follow him out because he is someone trusted and loved and they're happy to follow him. Guess what? They're not gonna follow a stranger. They're not gonna follow someone that they don't know anything about. Jesus told Peter that if he really loved Jesus, he should take care of Jesus' sheep. That meant that Jesus wanted Peter to show his love for Jesus with actions. To do, to show. His previous actions to Jesus about, I love you, I won't, I won't, I won't lie and say I'm not your follower. And then he did. Well, guess what? Jesus saying, yeah, you say you love me. Now take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Feed my sheep. Take care of my sheep. Here's your chance. Here's your opportunity. Show me. It was time to demonstrate Peter's love for Jesus by the way that he was going to love others. Who is someone? You ready for this question? Who is someone that you might want to invite to the sheep pen with you? <laughs> so that they can experience the joy of Jesus. Because we know that Jesus is our shepherd. Like we read about in Psalm 23 last week, he's our shepherd. He guides us, he cares for us. He leads us beside still waters and green pastures. He restores our soul, he protects us. And even when we walk through the dark valleys, because Jesus doesn't promise us that life is gonna be easy and wonderful and we don't have to do anything. He says, even in the darkest valleys, when the days in the life is tough and hard and we don't like it, Jesus guides us and he cares for us and he protects us and watches over us, which I think is pretty 
pretty awesome. All right, my dear lovelies, it is time to wrap up with our memory verse. It's our last time practicing Luke 24, 6, 8 together. Do you remember it? Let's try it. He is not here. He has arisen. Oh, I love this one so much, and I hope you do as well. Luke 24, 6, A. Now, of course, like I said earlier, we're going to end in a word of prayer, but do you remember the two things we were going to ask about? We were going to ask God to have the ability to see those who need our help and to have courage in asking for help for ourselves as well. And I also want you to be courageous when offering your help to others. Guess what? It's not easy. It's really hard sometimes, especially when there are strangers involved or you're not quite sure if you're the right person for the job. But guess what? If you've got God in your heart, if you've got the Holy Spirit, and he's saying something to your brain going, Go see if that person needs help. Hey, go tell that person Jesus loves them. Hey, go invite that person to church. Hey, let's pray for that person you saw today. Guess what? God gives us the courage to do those things. Will you join me in a word of prayer as we close up? Heavenly Father, I'm so very thankful for the way that you care for me. And I ask that you give me eyes to see those who are hurting and those who need help around me and give me the courage to be bold and strong, to help them, to listen to the Holy Spirit inside of me, to guide and direct me to those who need my help and give me the courage to ask for help when I am struggling as well, Lord, to go to my friends and my family or even a stranger and just say with courage and bravery, I need your help. Will you pray for me? We thank you for all that you are for us as our protector, as our healer, as our very best friend, as the light of our lives. Help us to be strong and courageous to reach out to those around us. Heavenly Father, I thank you for these kids and their families and for our church family. Help us to be bold in our faith, to grow closer to one another as we grow closer to you and guide our path forward. In your holy and precious name I pray, amen. Okay, my dear lovelies. Well, since it is the last Sunday of the month, where has April gone? Man, whoosh, just flew by. That means it's time for a sneak peek in our new series. I'm so excited that this one looks so much fun and I can't wait to show you all. So here's just a little sneak peek. I'll see you in a minute. Bye-bye.